The best instructors all secretly want their classes to be fun. And I think ultimately we would love our techs to be fun as well. Jonathan and I are really trying to bring the latest research from composition to the classroom. And we're trying to do it in an accessible way. That's why we're using the comic book form. We learned very quickly that writing a textbook that will be a graphic book is not at all like writing a regular textbook. A textbook usually goes through development and production in several stages. First, the author and the development editor are going to work on the content. And then the production editor is going to manage design and copy editing and proofreading all in successive stages. But this project was really different. So the illustrators ended up making both the content and they laid out the pages at the same time. And that's something that a compositor would normally do and it drove us all crazy because we had to all look at the pages at the same time and comment on them together. We've actually written entire chapters and revised them while communicating sometimes for hours on end via Skype. I didn't think you could match up something as heavy as a textbook uh, with something as perceived as light as a comic and make it go together, make it work together. I thought it was going to be seen as some kind of embellishment, or some kind of dumbing down, or some kind of just trick. So every time I would get uh, a new chapter that I could review and, and see, I would always approach it with that, that same kind of skepticism. After about the first or second chapter, I didn't really have any more skepticism. I was fully on board. I thought it was wonderful. I was looking to uh, see that the comics form was taken seriously and um, that it offered uh, students and teachers something uh, that traditional textbooks uh, maybe did not. And I just thought, wow, this format really fits what Liz and, and Jonathan and Bedford's trying to do here. We really work very hard together to draft, but then also to come back to those drafts again and again. Liz and Jonathan, we're out of California. Uh, you know, Carolyn and, and Lisa and Deb and everyone uh, at Bedford St. Martin were out in, in Boston and New York. Once we read the script uh, from Les and Jonathan, now we need to think about it spatially and, and also come up with visual metaphors and visual sort of motifs that we repeat throughout the book. So much of what has to be communicated in the book is not communicated through our words, it's communicated through the visuals. You always want to think about what, what your reader is doing, where their eye is going, and what is it stopping them. So this was what we would send to the editors and to the writers so that they could sort of see how it flows based on the original script. And then once we turn that in, and that's all approved, we then use those very light drawings to ink with brushes and pens. Then also we have the ability to go in and, and uh, put in the backgrounds and change things up. In the layout, I can sort of say, a bunch of clothes. And then Kevin can go and draw all those many, many clothes. When we read, we're not just absorbing information, but we are entering into a new world, entering into somebody else's head, entering into a body of ideas, taking them apart, trying to understand how they work. I don't think that we could have communicated that in words alone. You have to see it. This text is fun, and what I like about it is that I can assign it, I can discuss it, I can make sure that students engage with it to a certain degree, but I can also be fairly certain that students are going to take this text and return to it, and talk about it with their friends, and recommend it to their friends. And I think that's the power of rhetoric, and that's the power of a good text, is that what is seen as maybe fun is really just persuasive, and it's engaging, and it makes people want to come back to those ideas again and again.